Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about network jitter. So first of all, what is network jitter? Uh, network jitter is actually data packets being transferred over the internet and a measurement of whether or not these data packets are being transmitted consistently and smoothly. If they're not being transferred consistently, it means you're going to have high jitter. And if they are being transmitted consistently at the same speed, it means you're going to have low jitter, which is perfect. That's what you want for playing music on Jam Kazam. Um, a better way maybe to explain it for everyone that's a little non-technical is think of a highway. Think of a highway that has four lanes. Uh, you know, if you travel, depending upon what time of day you travel, there might be no cars on this highway. And you can get to your destination using cruise control. Cruise control would be the same speed all the way there, smooth, consistent. But sometimes it's rush hour, right? And rush hour would be like the times when your wife's using Netflix or your kids are on their phones downloading stuff on social media. And everybody is just just using all the data that's available on your internet. That's like rush hour traffic. What's happening to your data during that time or what's happening to the car on the highway at that time? It's pure stop and go. You can't get to your destination on cruise control. Sometimes you're going fast. Sometimes you're just at a dead stop. That's what's happening with data packets. And when that's happening, it's causing your jitter on Jam Kazam to be high. So how do we improve this situation? Well, the number one way to improve that situation is actually by using an Ethernet cord. Have that plugged in instead of using Wi-Fi, and you're going to dramatically, one, improve your download and upload speed, and, and two, you're going to really, really reduce any type of jitter that uh, might take place over the Internet. So let's take a look at uh, my, my jitter here, my performance here. And right now you can see... I'm fluctuating between, uh, well, first of all, this is actually audio face uh, jitter that is taking place. And right now, my stats have me fluctuating anywhere between all greens and yellow, which honestly isn't that bad of a thing for jamming on Jam Kazam. Um, let's leave this session and let's just randomly jump into another session so I can show you some more stats because the stats that we're looking for are not gear interface, audio interface. What we're looking for is network interface. So to show you that, I'm just going to quickly jump into a session. Let's see if I can quickly jump into this one. Okay, great. So let's just quickly take a look at some... some uh, some internet this is what we're looking at here some internet jitter and this is pretty good uh 1.4 is actually quite good uh latency is not that bad for jamming on jam because you can probably get away with that latency um that's even better latency and decent internet jitter and here we have a little bit higher jitter but these three guys are, are, are doing a decent job in terms of like they should be able to play in sync with each other and they're probably having a decent experience right now. Even though it's in red, um, there was ways for them to actually improve that and let's talk a little bit about those ways right now. So how, what is the most effective way to measure your own personal latency? So one of the ways I like doing that is going to a website called DSL Reports. And I go to that website opposed to using the data that Jam Kazam provides me with just because, you know, to be honest, I don't know how reliable some of the information that Jam Kazam is giving me in terms of what my latency scores are and what my uh, jitter scores are. Don't know how reliable it is. So I'd rather go to a, a website that kind of specializes in just doing reports. And DSL Reports does just that. So let's go to that website. Okay, so here we are at DSL Reports. When you first go to dslreports.com, you'll go to this screen. You can click on Speed Test and run a speed test. And then you select uh, your internet connection, whether you're on fiber, cable, or DSL. So I am on the fiber connection, so we'll click on that. And it begins to uh, determine which internet server is the closest to me. And then it does a test, sending information to that internet server. And seeing how quick my download speed is. 
which is measured in this blue box. And this bottom section here, this half circle, that's what's actually measuring my jitter, which they are referring to as bluffer bloat. And every time this goes up a little bit, every time it goes up, that is the jitter, the stop and go action of the data packets that are taking place. And what you want to see is you want to see the smooth lines, smooth lines of data being transferred over the internet. And as you can see, here are some of my results for overall speed, quality, and my jitter or buffer blow. So like I was saying before, one of the ways to have horrible jitter is just to not have an ethernet connection and to be on Wi-Fi. So let's try that all right now. I'm gonna unplug my ethernet cord. I'm gonna turn back on my camera. Just reconnecting Jam Kazam to the server because I plugged out my ethernet cord. And let me turn back on my, uh, my Wi-Fi so you can see indeed plugged out my internet cord, right? And let's run this same test. Okay, running the same test and right away you can see you can see the difference. Oh, what did I do there? Oh, don't click on ads. Don't click on ads. No need to click on ads. I'm trying to close it. There we go. Okay. Now let's do that again. Clicking on fiber. Okay. Okay. So right away, as soon as this gets going, there we go. You can see the jitter and the buffer bloat is moving much more than it was previously. So there's a lot of jitter that's taking place, mostly because I do not have my ethernet cord plugged in. You'll also notice that my download speed is dramatically, dramatically reduced. That's reduced by, that's like almost one tenth of what it was before. And my upload speed also reduced, all because I do not have this plugged in, right? So think about it, I could be getting like 10 times the performance just by plugging this in. And as you can see my results here, a D in terms of buffer and bloat and uh, overall B and overall A. So let's say, let's say for example, you did have this plugged in. And let's say you were using ethernet, but you still had Bs, Ds and As across the board and you had a poor, anything like worse than an A or a B. Let's say you had a C or a D for buffer bloat. What are some of the ways that you can increase your, your network jitter, improve that situation. Well, number one, you can improve your bandwidth, increase your bandwidth, because let's go back to the highway. The more lanes you have on the highway or the more bandwidth you have, the, the, the more likely you're gonna be able to use your cruise control, find a lane and get to your destination at the same speed, just because there's more room on the highway. Same thing with the bandwidth, there's more room in your internet so you can actually use more data and people can be on it at the same time and it's not gonna affect your internet. So I like, there's a section here on DSL reports where they talk a little bit about the speed up, download speeds and upload speeds of fiber and the difference between that and cable and the difference between that and DSL. So uh, you can just check out those differences. If you're on DSL, maybe it's time for you to, to get yourself on cable. If you're on cable and you're still experiencing bad buffer bloat, maybe it's time for you to get on a, a fiber connection. If you don't wanna spend the money, what else, what else could you do? Well, you could log into your modem and you can start just eliminating devices that exist on your modem. So here I'm logged into mine. Okay, and you can see I've got nine devices currently connected. I could just connect, click on this and start disconnecting devices that are on my internet. And that would be like in essence, removing cars from the highway or removing data packets that are being transferred so that I have enough room to just transmit data packets from my Jamkazam session. That might improve your jitter. 
but it might not. What's better and what's most important is you keep this plugged in, your Ethernet cord. That's what's really going to dramatically improve your performance. I hope you learned something from my video today. Feel free to check out my other tutorials on Jam Kazam. Um, make sure you subscribe and like. I'll be, I'll be actually uploading a lot more tutorials about Jam Kazam to help everybody out there and make their experience playing with other people virtually and online as, as good as it can be. Thanks for watching.